know that it's not every woman you sleep with. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, it's not every woman you sleep with. You should know the woman you should sleep with. It has to be your wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Not your master's wife. Yeah. It, it's, it's the word of God that will teach us. So Joseph had that wisdom. And he was taught by the word of God. Say, you are my master's wife. I can take care of everything in this house. My master said, I should be overseer over everything, including his money. But he didn't tell me that I should be overseer over his wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is a boundary. Life, in life, God set boundary for everybody. Don't cross your boundary. Hallelujah. I say, don't do what? Don't cross your boundary. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The chair you are sitting on is your boundary. You cannot suddenly rise up and go and sit in somebody's chair. Right now, if you rise up, maybe to come and dance or give a friend or do something, you are going back to sit. Where would you go and sit? You sit in the same church, chair that you are sitting. You will not go and sit in somebody's chair. Because that's not your boundary. Once you came to church today, you sat on that chair. That's your boundary for today. Yes. So today, if if you go out there, you and you come back, or oh, we all stand up, we are praying and moving about, and everybody should go and sit. You will not go and sit on where somebody was sitting. Otherwise, you are creating confusion. Everybody in life has a boundary. God has a boundary for us. So you have to learn it. You, you have your own phone. You can't take somebody's phone. You can to church and you see somebody's phone there, you take it. That's we call it stealing. Hallelujah. Amen. It's your boundary, it's your phone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody in life has boundaries. So if you have grace, it will teach you. Joseph did not sleep with Potiphar's wife. His, his destiny and his vision and mission in life, his dreams of greatness would have been aborted by the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil would have terminated his life. He, 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 they wouldn't even have sent him to prison. They would have killed him right away. If he actually did it, they would have killed him. Potiphar wouldn't have sent him to prison. But the truth is that Potiphar discovered that it was not true. That the wife is lying against Joseph. So in order to save Joseph's life and to save his own marriage, the relationship between him and his wife, he has to do something to please the wife. So he has to send Joseph to prison. Hallelujah. Amen. If he didn't do anything to Joseph, the wife said, ah, so the guy came to rape me and I told you and you left him to be. Ah, okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you destroy the relationship between Potiphar and his wife, so in order to please the wife and to save Joseph's life, wow. he knows that if Joseph continues to be in the house, the wife might kill him or poison him someday. Mm. So God permitted Joseph to be put in prison. But in prison, the Bible says, Joseph find favor there. Yes. That is when God was appointing him, giving him an appointment to meet Potiphar. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you are serving God, if you are truly serving God and you know that you have not committed any sin, they can lie against you. Troubles can come your way. Challenges can come your way. Wherever you find yourself, know that God can bless you there. Amen. Every situation that comes to you, because of the grace, God can turn that situation into a blessing. Amen. Even if it is a curse, God will turn it into a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If, it is, if it is a prison, God will turn it into liberty. Amen. Yeah. Joseph's prison clothes was changed. One Potiphar called a Pharaoh, one Pharaoh called Joseph, they changed his prison clothes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how he became a great person. He went to the prison. He met an officer of power who had a dream and he was able to interpret the dream. When he got the interpretation of the dream,
need, the Bible makes us to understand that it came to pass. So when Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a dream, he needed somebody who would interpret the dream. There was nobody anywhere. Then this official, Pharaoh's official, now remember that there is somebody in prison who can interpret a dream. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. So whatever prison you are, make sure you are able to interpret a dream. Amen. What I mean is that make sure that you have a talent. You have a grace. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a grace working on you. Amen. Make sure that you can do something good. Yes. That good thing you can do, anything that you are good at, that you can do, it can produce results. It can produce blessings. Amen. It will bring the favor of God. Amen. The grace will shine on it. Amen. And it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will feed you. Amen. All the days of your life, God will feed you. Amen. Somebody say, God will feed me. God will feed me. Hallelujah. Amen. So grace teaches to deny what they last. Nobody told Joseph not to sleep with somebody's wife. But it is the grace of God that taught him. Hallelujah. Amen. We are privileged to have the Bible to teach us. In the days of Joseph, there were no Bibles. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have no excuse for our sins. If we don't allow God's grace to teach us, is this Bible is made available by the grace of God. And when we talk about grace, Jesus is the embodiment of grace. Let's turn our Bible to the book of John. John chapter 1. Jesus is the embodiment of grace. In Jesus we find grace. Through Jesus we find grace. In Jesus we see grace. And in Jesus we receive grace. And we operate by the grace in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there? John chapter 1. Now, we're going to read from verse number 16. Verse number 16. Verse number 16. It says, And of his fullness are all we receive, and grace for grace. Verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, I want all of us, if you read after me, John chapter 1 verse 17, you read after me. For the law, For the law was, given by Moses, was given by Moses, but grace, by grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses, Moses came to give us a law. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. And the law was very important for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, it was very important. God don't want human beings to be lying and stealing and killing. But the law alone cannot solve that problem. Hallelujah. Amen. The law alone cannot solve that problem. If there is food in the house and that you are very hungry and the food is just at the kitchen where the kitchen is not locked and you can easily go there you are in the house and your mother tells you don't eat that food don't touch that food and you are in the house the whole day you have not eaten what your mother said cannot solve that problem of you not touching the food. Hallelujah. Amen. The fact that you have not eaten, you are in the house the whole day, you are hungry, and your mother said, don't touch that food. Don't eat that food. What your mother said is the law, but it cannot stop you from eating that food. Because you are what? Hungry. You are starving for the food. You are feeling for it. You can't do without it. So that is a human problem. Human problem is that we couldn't do without sin because of the flesh we have. Hallelujah. Amen. So a law alone is not enough. For you to tell somebody don't steal, it's not enough. If you tell somebody don't commit fornication, it's not enough. If, if, see, that, that, that is what Moses' law was 
covering the truth from human beings. Because you have not given the child food, yet you tell him not to touch the food and he's hungry. Hallelujah. Amen. So there was no truth in the law. But the Bible said Jesus came with grace and what? Truth. The truth is that we all need the food. But God should give us our own food. So that we will not touch the food that is at the kitchen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the truth. But he didn't give us our own food. And that food, now Jesus brought it. It is called grace. It is called what? Grace. Grace is sufficient. In the Bible says, my grace is sufficient for you. God's grace. It is your food you have so that you will not go and touch the food that is at the kitchen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you will not be stubborn. That's the problem that Esau had that made him so his birthright. Esau was starving for food. His brother had the food. His brother said, you need the food. He said, sure. I'm so much hungry. Jacob said, okay, sell me your birthright. Esau had no other option because he was really hungry. He needed to eat. His whole food was not ready. That means he didn't have grace. So he has to sell his birthright. Not the nature of sin. When you sin, according to the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, Lest there be among us any prophet person or fornicator like Esau, who for one vessel of meat sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17. So, Esau sold his birthright and he compares it to a fornicator or a profane person, a sinner, anybody who is committing sin, you are selling your birthright to the devil. But Esau selling his birthright, the truth was that he was starving. He really needed food. Hallelujah. Amen. And his brother, who has the food, gave him a condition that I will not give you my food until I get your birthright. Mm. You are the firstborn. I want you to give that honor to me. I want to be called the firstborn. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and that really means if father is dying or anything, the portion of inheritance he will give to the firstborn, he will give it to me. And uh, Esau did not see any relevance in father's dying compared to his anger, what he was feeling, how he needed food to eat at that time. He didn't see it. He did not see any relevance to inheritance he would get in the future compared to what he needed for that day. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And the truth is that what you need today is always more important. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, even Jesus taught us to pray. He said, when you pray, you say, oh, Father, give us this day our daily prayer. Yeah. So what you need to eat today is important. Yeah. We need food to eat today before we can think about food to eat tomorrow. So what is so hard was food to eat tomorrow. While Jacob had food for today. And Jacob was telling me, give me tomorrow's food. Why I give you today's food? And Esau said, I'm hungry today. Tomorrow hasn't come yet. So if you want my tomorrow's food, which is more of a blessing, I oh you can take it and give me your today's food. That was the truth. But see law did not bring truth. But when Jesus came, he brought us both. He brought us grace and truth. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He knew that no human being can be sinless. That we all at one time or the other will disobey God. So he brought grace to cover up for our sins. Amen. That's why we all serve God by the grace. Amen. So that's why it says grace and truth. <coughs> yeah. John chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. And of his fullness I already received, 
and pray for grace. Verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So when you receive Jesus, you have received grace and you have received the truth. Because grace is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, grace is the truth. The truth is that I have no power of my own. The way I am hungry today, you cannot tell me that I should not eat Esau's food. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot tell me that I should not sell my birthright when I'm really hungry and I need that food. I remember some time ago I want to do some fasting, 40 days fasting in Kumasiya. I jumped mountains. When I, I came down from the mountains, I was staying in one house there. I wanted, I needed food, money. So people were supposed to send me money from America. Over two weeks, three weeks, they were not sending the money. Mm -hmm. I started doing another by first fasting. Meaning, I went to that food. For two weeks, I was drinking water. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I started selling things. The, one of the things I started to sell is my universal charger. Mm -hmm. And when I sold it, even the money I sold it for was so small that I used it to buy food only for one day. Yeah. Imagine my child that was my birthright. I sold it because I was starving. I needed to eat. Mm. That was the truth. The truth is that I was starving. I cannot keep the universal child when I can sell it. I, when I just sold it for seven CD or so. And that seven CD, I just used it to buy food that same day. <laughs> And, I, and, and then I continue drinking water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, because it couldn't solve my problem. But at least I ate food. And for two weeks, I ate food. I ate food and I continue drinking water again. Then, after another five days of drinking water, I said, no, I have to go and sell something. I, take my, I took my suit, a suit that somebody bought from UK, from me, I took it to go and sell. So that's how I was walking around Kumasi, I do looking for some people to buy, going to shops and shops. And while I was passing, a boy called me, a certain guy. He said, Pastor, Pastor. I looked at him and I said, do you know? He said, yes, you don't remember me? Oh, he came to preach in one church. And I was there, and he was talking about Sakodia's church. You know, my friend is at the church. I came to pray there. And he said his mother is the Yosef Mami, the pastor's wife. Apparently, it is, a, it is a pastor's wife, the sister's son. Hallelujah. Amen. So I said, oh, sure. So I said, oh, I, I want to sell this to you too. I came to do some prayer and fasting. I need money back to even buy food. I got, oh, he said, oh, this is you. Oh, you don't need to sell this. Do old. You know what that guy did? He bought bread for me. He said that not man, but he bought bread, one full bread. Because of that, I didn't sell the suit. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I came house, I came to the house with the bread and I ate that bread that same day. You saw I was so hungry, I finished it that same day and I went back to drink water. Hallelujah. Amen. After I drank water for another three days or four days, somebody sent me some dollars. Then I went, I, I, went to, I went to the restaurant. Somebody sent me some hundred dollars. I went to the restaurant and I bought fried rice and chicken. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I begin to enjoy it. So the truth is that I, I couldn't do without selling something. So the truth is that no human being can do without living in sin. But Jesus came to give us grace. The bread, the bread that the guy gave me that day was the grace yes. that helped me not to sell my suit that I went to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. It was what? Grace. So Jesus brought us grace. Today we have our bread here. We're going to have the communion service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have our bread and our wine here. That's something Jesus gave us to symbolize His grace. Amen. Amen. As we will pray and eat it, God will supply your needs. Amen. You will not lie before you eat. Amen. 
you will not steal before you eat. Amen. You will not be a prostitute before you will eat. Amen. You will not kill before you will eat. Amen. When you eat this, the Lord supper today. Amen. The Lord's bread and his body. Amen. All the days of your life, the Lord will continue to provide for your needs. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not do evil to survive. Amen. Miracles will show up. The wonders will show up. Amen. Grace and truth will show up in your life. Amen. God's favor will show up. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You see, every human being sins when he is tempted to sin. But you don't stay in sin. You don't allow sin. You don't allow sin to be your character. In your behavior. Don't enjoy sin. Otherwise, you are rejecting grace. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to rebuke sin, refuse sin, overcome sin because grace is meant to teach you to overcome the sin. Amen. Amen. And that grace is Jesus. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We are still in John chapter 1, but we are reading verse 14. So the word became flesh, that is Jesus. The word became Jesus. And we saw his glory. It's the glory of the only begotten of the Father. And he is full of grace and truth. Moses had law, but the law was not the truth that can set us free from sin. Because the law was telling you to do something that you can never ever help yourself without doing. Hallelujah. Amen. You needed truth. You needed grace to supply your need so that you will not do that thing. Hallelujah. Yeah, like I used my selling the suit and the bread that God bought for me so that I did not sell the suit. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't sell the suit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, what saved me? I wouldn't have exposed myself to the owner of the shop because the owner of the next shop when they were selling suit was the person I was staying in their house, I was the person I was staying in his house, and he was in America, but he owned that shop. And the boys were staying in the house with me. They also stayed in their own room. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And, he, and the guy who owned the shop was in America, so he called me to pray. I prayed for him, and he said he would send me money, but he was delayed. So, the way the guy got bread for me after that shop, in the next shop, in their own shop. I wanted to go and show it to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, so they speak to the boys there. I didn't even know they were there. So they would have known that, oh, their master's pastor is coming to sell his suit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. You see, so this one who got bread for me made me put my suit inside the bag. I didn't sell it. At the next shop, I saw those boys who were taking care of them. Their master's shop. And their master was the guy I've been praying for in America, whose house I'm staying, who gave me a room in their house. Hallelujah. Amen. And they, are, they know that I'm their master's pastor. He used to call me from America and I pray for him. Amen. Amen. So, so, so you look at how God used grace to save me from this grace. Yes. So that is what grace does. Grace always saves us from what? This grace. Amen. Amen. The bread the God bought for me was a grace yes. that helped me not to sell my suit. Because it was a suit that was nice that I used to wear and preach. The person bought it from UK. And he gave it to me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yet I wanted to sell it. So life is full of temptations that can happen to anybody. That will make the person sin. But grace it will deliver us from the power of sin. Mm -hmm. And that grace is 
Jesus. Amen. His grace and truth. So you can serve God because you have the grace of God. Amen. And He is Jesus. Amen. All the days of your life you can serve God. No matter how hard it is, the grace will see you through. No matter how difficult things become, the grace will see you through. It doesn't matter what you're facing, the grace will deliver you. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but grace. So when you receive the grace, you are not under that the law, that means the law does not control you. The law does not rule you. The law does not dictate your life. But grace is what controls you. And because of that, sin will not have dominion. If law controls us, all of us will do bad things to survive. But if grace controls us, we will survive by the grace. Amen. Romans chapter 6. Verse number 14. Hallelujah. Amen. So sin will not have dominion over you. Amen. Because you are not under the law. You are now under the grace. That means you are under Jesus. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how hard things will become. At the end, at the very end, the devil thinks that now you will do evil to survive. Grace of God will just show up. They will bring provision for you. Hallelujah. Amen. It will bring blessing for you. Amen. It will bring glory for you. Amen. So that you will not sell your birthright to Jacob. Amen. Anything Jacob that wants you to sell your birthright, you will not sell it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. You will not be asking a boy for money as a lady and the boy will say, unless I sleep with you, I will not give you that money. Before that will happen, God will favor you. God will open a door to you. Amen. He will give you a business. Amen. He will open financial doors. You will not be fornicating before you get money. Amen. The grace will supply your needs. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We serve all our grace. Without the grace, nobody qualifies to serve God. If you are lacking grace, you can't serve God. So the grace is enough. The grace of God is in our hallelujah. Amen. Whatever we're doing in this world is only grace that will sustain us. Anybody who doesn't have grace can never. God bless you. This is Apostle Ezekiel. Thank you, today. Thank you for taking the time to watch the program and listening to the word of God. This has been the extra act of drunkards. And you are welcome. welcome. If you need to have, if you have prayer or some kind of counseling, prayer requests or some kind of counseling, or if you want to partner with us, you're free. Now you can see the numbers of your screen. You can call or WhatsApp the number and we gladly, we welcome your prayer requests, we pray with you and this world has cancer you. And hey man, you can partner with us for us to preach the gospel to the nations of the world. God bless you for taking time to watch the Yesha Art broadcast. May the Lord God favor you and the glory of you and hope it does for you as I pray for you. Every door that is closed against your destiny, let the God of heaven open in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, maybe upon hearing the word of God, you will bless. You want to give your life to Christ. Yes, I give you opportunity to give your life to Christ because it's very important. Without Christ, you are nothing. Now, if you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to just say this words of prayer with me. Repeat this way. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the privilege you have given to me. I thank you because you died on the cross for my life. I receive you into my soul. Forgive my sins, O Lord. Come and live in my heart. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you didn't pray that prayer, I want you to rest assured that you were saved and Jesus come to live in your heart. Now from today, you live your life in consonant as a born again child of God. You live like a Christian. Obey the word of God. Find a Bible believing church to attend. Now if you happen to be in a crowd or you are in Ghana, you can worship with us also. We are in a crowd at SCC. Now, when you take the number, you call, we give your father the registration, you come and worship with us on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. God bless you. See you same time next week. Bye.